So I'm going to keep this one short. So I just went over my example of bones and, uh, and, and gave a somewhat crude, but I hope useful overview of what Parker says, what Parker calls images of women criticism, or what we might just call, right, the study of the rep, the, the study of the representation of women in media um, and culture, right. Uh, and anyway, one could pursue such projects, not just in television shows, but again, in novels, in um, in our in our journalism, in our politics, um, right, in our academics, or you know, uh, what have you. Another project of feminist literary criticism, maybe more aligned with second wave, um, although I'm not sure it matters much, is uh, whether it's second or third or first or who cares. Um, maybe some care. So, but I'd say second wave. Um, another project uh, usually associated with second wave feminist literary criticism is the discovery or recovery of texts written by women, which have been suppressed, forgotten, or neglected by the decades of literary scholarship preceding it. Uh, on page, turning to page 155 of our textbook, um, uh, Parker writes, quote, Feminist criticism began by studying the often disturbing images of women in literature written by men and opposing those images to the authority of women's experience. But the concentration on writing by men quickly came to seem limiting. Feminist critics turned increasingly to women's literary history contributing to a massive movement beyond the standard set of literature that critics and teachers typically studied and taught, which came to be called the canon. In this respect, feminist critics of all colors and heritages worked to expand the canon, joining together with critics of African-American literature, and then increasingly of Latino, Latino literature, Asian American literature, American Indian literature, Black British literature, such as works by British writers of Caribbean, South Asian, and African heritage, and literature from around the world, including English language literature in English departments and beyond English departments, literatures in other languages, often in comparative literature programs, or other programs, right? Other other uh, other language language programs. As part of this project, literary critics have dug into the archives to uncover forgotten works of literature, ranging, excuse me, sorry about this, ranging from works once famous and then forgotten, a common category for women's writing, to works never published before. For several decades now, these recovery efforts have dramatically enlarged the range of literature that critics, teachers, and students read and study." End quote. Um, Virginia Woolf herself <clears throat> was among these largely neglected authors for some time. Right. Um, I, I told the story in class about uh, when I go to the Virginia Woolf annual conference held every year um, to share my research and hear the research of others. It's actually an incredibly moving experience at times because senior scholars who I meet and get the pleasure of talking to when I get a chance um, what's so cool about it is I'm meeting meeting the professors and the teachers who fought, fought, and dragged the feet of, of literary studies to focus on Virginia Woolf. Um, and then you get, um, you know, professors sort of in the middle of their academic careers who were the students of these women, and you get to see how their work um, is dedicated um, in an incredibly moving way to issues that not only resonate with the issues that the senior scholars focus on, but have developed in, in all sorts of fascinating pathways and byways. Um, and then you get people like me, right? Young scholars who uh, generationally have never experienced the idea that Virginia Woolf would have ever been left out of classrooms, right? Um, many of us had read Wolf when we were teenagers. Many of us studied Wolf several times as undergraduates um, and much more intensely as graduate students um, and rarely have been looked at as weird. You're studying Wolf? Um, it's almost, um, people, people almost don't even notice that it was once um, an odd thing to do, right? Um, Anyway, if we if we actually um, look um, look at the MLA International Bibliography, which is the online database all of you should be using um, through the library to to do your research or some of your research, um, 
for other classes. You're not writing a research paper for me, but for other English classes. According to the MLA International Bibliography, um, if I just use the search term wolf, comma, Virginia, that's it. That's the only search term I use. If I use that and look only for peer-reviewed journal articles, in the 1950s, I find there were only 12 published. In the 1950s, only 12 peer-reviewed articles published on with the search term Virginia Woolf attached to it. In the 1960s, there were 40, four, zero. Jumping to the 1980s, there were 245. So as, as you can see, between the 60s and 80s, there's the jump, right, of interest in Woolf. In the 1990s, 431 journal articles. In the 2000s, 589. In the 2010s thus far, although the number is probably not up to date, um, with the most recent publications coming out over the last two months, 182. Now, of course, um, uh, you have to take into account that there's many more scholars than there used to be on Virginia Woolf, so certainly there's more journal articles, certainly probably more journals out there than there once were, but maybe not. Um, so you also have to take that into account, but it's pretty remarkable to go from 12 to 589. That's just peer-reviewed journal articles. That doesn't count books, uh, book chapters, non-peer-reviewed journal articles, websites, anything like that. Um, um, so, uh, but I think the numbers still illustrate my point. Still, although we might associate this, although my story, right, associates the idea of trying to recover a text with an older generation of scholars, um, the problem of exclusion from the classroom and from scholarship still persists, maybe not so much with Virginia Woolf, but many of Woolf's uh, uh, contemporary contemporaries, um, meaning her female contemporaries or women contemporaries, are still largely neglected. Right? If I run a similar search on Olive Moore, a novelist, right, uh, a woman novelist, looking for only for peer-reviewed journal articles, I find one article published in 1985, excuse me, 95, and one published last year in 2013. In short, I find two, two over the entire span, right, that I, I talked about before with Wolf, right? So as whereas Wolf, it seems it's embarrassing almost to look back at the 1950s and think that there were only 12 peer-reviewed journal articles published, right? There was only two ever published, at least according to my search terms, which are quite crude, um, uh, that we, I, can, I could find about all of more. Although, again, that doesn't include book chapters and books, and certainly um, uh, uh, certainly there, there has been some work on all of more, but I hope it illustrates that not much has been done on women who were Wolf's contemporaries. Um, so two articles, that's it. So there's still quite a bit of work to do in terms of recovering and studying, it would seem, especially for those dedicated to the discovery and recovery of works written by women. In my next video, again, I'm going to cut this one a little short, I'll be turning to third wave feminism, or at least to one, what we might think of as a third wave feminist, and her critique of a few tendencies in second wave feminist literary criticism, particularly in the way it sometimes slips a bit too quickly in extolling women's difference from men in the face of a few millennia, right, of cultural, societal, and sexual denigration, into forgetting that differences also exist, circulate, and matter among women. Women of different sexualities, races, ethnicities, classes, religions, ages, generations, families, nationalities, neighborhoods, occupations, political parties, education levels, desires, affiliations, partnerships, legacies, traditions, tastes, etc. Okay, so when I come back, I'll talk, um, I'll be walking us through uh, Toral Noise, the, uh, the book chapter uh, from Sexual Textual Politics on Virginia Woolf. All right.